I'm Oprah Winfrey. Welcome to Super Soul Conversations, the podcast. I believe that one of the most valuable gifts you can give yourself is time. Taking time to be more fully present. Your journey to become more inspired and connected to the deeper world around us starts right now. So, Marie Forleo is a leader in a whole new generation of super solars. And at age 33, she launched what became a multi-million dollar life coaching business. Millions of young women look to Marie as their inspiration for empowerment and also uh, achievement. The title for Marie's session is Everything is figure outable. Hello, Super Solars! It is so, so good to be here with you. So I want to tell you about a time a few years ago. It was a really rough time. Business was going great, but my relationship with Josh, my beloved, was on the rocks. So much so that we found ourselves in couples therapy. Now, let's be honest, because we're all friends here, right? (laughs) Generally speaking, you don't do couples therapy unless it's serious, which in our case, it was. So the issue on the table, how much time I spend working. (laughs) Now, I got to be honest, I love my work. I love what I do. It's part of my DNA. It's creative and exciting and fulfilling on so many levels. So this, this was a hard issue for me to face. And while I hated the fact that this was the issue, facts are facts. And there was some irrefutable evidence that I couldn't deny. For instance, At that time, Josh and I had been together for a full seven years and never once taken a vacation. Like, never taken a vacation together as a couple. Of course, we traveled all the time, but it was always for work. It was always for speaking conferences and workshops and seminars and yada yada. But like a real vacation, just the two of us for no productive purpose, that never happened. So here I was, feeling scared and conflicted and heartbroken, because from my point of view, this one thing I love, my work, was causing me to lose this man that I love. So Josh is an actor, and uh, all this was going down when he was in the middle of filming a movie. I, of course, was in the middle of all my own work projects, and it was a few weeks before his birthday. So I got this idea, what if For his birthday, we went on an actual vacation, like a real vacation. Radical concept, I know. So I took a look at our calendars, and I realized there was only one four-day window of time that this vacation could happen, that it needed to happen. So I go online, and I do a little research, and I book us a trip to Barcelona. Barcelona is someplace that Josh had talked about going for years, like seven of them. (laughs) So as typical, the day of the trip comes, and I have some coaching calls that go right up until the very minute that we are supposed to leave for the airport. Now, based on my calculations, we would get to the airport and have about an hour and 45 minutes to spare. Not ideal. I always like to be on time, but I knew it could work. So I get done with those coaching calls, we hop in the car, and we head straight to JFK. And as it always happens, when you're just a little bit tight on time, we hit some mega traffic. I am starting to sweat, but we got there. So we get out of the car real fast, passports in hand, dragging up our luggage right up to that counter. I hand over the passports, and I say, hi there. We're here to check in for the 545 to Barcelona, please. We're going on vacation. The woman takes her passports, she starts clicking away at her computer, scrunches up her face, 
looks at her watch, calls her colleagues over, points at the screen, looks at her watch and says, I'm sorry, Ms. Forleo, but there's no way you're making it on the 545. You've missed the deadline to check your bags. What? What are you talking about? It's only 455. The plane hasn't left yet. I'm sorry, it's just not possible. You missed the deadline to check your bags. And unfortunately, I can't even rebook you on tomorrow night's flight because that's completely full. But what I can do is rebook you on two days from now. Two days? No, no, no. We don't have two days. Please, we have to get on that flight tonight. Isn't there something you can do? The plane hasn't even left yet. Ms. Forleo, I'm sorry, there's really nothing I can do. You missed the deadline to check your bags. For international flights, you must check your bags at least one full hour before departure, and your flight's been changed. So now it's leaving from a whole other terminal. I am really sorry, but you're not going to make it. Time froze, and my heart sank, and I could feel the tears welling up in my eyes. Because those words, you're not going to make it. For me, that was about a lot more than just the flight. And I looked over, and I looked at the disappointment in Josh's face, not about the trip, but really about us. And it was in that moment that I remembered something this tiny but mighty woman taught me years before. This tiny but mighty woman, her name is Miriam. She's about 5'3", she's got the tenacity of a bulldog, kind of looks like June Cleaver, and she curses like a truck driver. <laughs> she grew up the daughter of two alcoholic parents in the projects of Newark, New Jersey, and she learned, by necessity, how to stretch a dollar bill around the block, like three times. One of the most industrious and resourceful people you will ever meet. She told me that she rarely felt valued or loved or beautiful as a little girl, but that she always found strength in God. And she made her promise to herself that when she got older someday, she'd find a way to a better life. That woman named Miriam is also my mom. I remember as a little girl sitting around our kitchen table, going through the Sunday paper together, cutting out coupons. My mom loved to teach me all the different ways that we could save money. And she taught me, pay very close attention to the free stuff that brands will send you, like recipe books and cooking utensils, if you save your proofs of purchase. One of my mom's most prized possessions on the planet was this little transistor radio that she got from Tropicana Orange Juice for free. <laughs> Shaped like an orange, had a red and white straw sticking out of the top. That was the antenna. She loved this radio. Now, my mom is the kind of woman who never sits down. She is never idle. She is always working, always got something on. Hello, now I know where I get it from, right? But as a little girl myself, I knew I could always find her somewhere around the yard or somewhere around the house by listening for the tinny little sound of that Tropicana orange. One day, I remember coming home from school, and I could hear the radio from down the block. And as I got closer, I realized, this is coming up from above. I look up, and I see my mom on the second story, the roof of our two-story house. And I was like, terrified, Ma, what are you doing up there? She yells over the radio, Re, I'm fine. The roof had a little leak. I called the roofer. They said it would be at least 500 bucks. Screw that. I remember we had some extra roofing material in the garage. I figured it would just take a few minutes. <laughs> so there's this other time. I'm coming home from school, and I walk in the front door, and I can hear that little radio blaring from the back of the house. I follow the sound, and I go back, and it's the bathroom. And I walk up to the bathroom door, and there's construction dust in the air, and pipes are sticking out of the wall. And I was like, Ma, what are you doing? What's happening? Re. No, don't worry, it's all fine. I'm just retiling the bathroom. We had a, you know, a couple tiles were loose. I didn't want it to get moldy. You got to get, my mom is high school educated, and this is the 80s. This is like pre-internet, pre-YouTube, pre-Google. 
I never knew what I could find my mom up to when I came home, but I always knew I could find her by following the sound of that little Tropicana orange radio. Then there was this one day. I'm walking home from school. It was a fall day, and that New Jersey chill was just starting to kick in. And I walk in the front door, and something was different. Silence. I start tiptoeing throughout the house. I was afraid of what I might find. Where was the sound of the Tropicana orange? And where was my mom? All of a sudden, I heard some clicks and clacks, and I followed that sound into the kitchen. And I see my mom hunched over the kitchen table. There's electrical tape and a screwdriver, and spread out in front of her in about 20 pieces is a completely dismantled Tropicana orange juice radio. <laughs> Ma, are you okay? What happened? Oh, Ree, I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. The the antenna got busted. The dial was a little off, so I'm fixing it. I stood there for a second, watching her work her magic. Hey, Ma, how do you know how to do so many different things that you've never done before, without anybody showing you how to do it? Oh, Ree, this ah,、uh, this ain't no big deal. Listen, honey, let me tell you something. Nothing in life is that complicated. All right, you can do whatever you set your mind to. You just roll up your sleeves, you get in there, and you do it. Everything is figureoutable. Everything is figureoutable. Everything is figureoutable. All right. Everything is figureoutable. So I'm standing there in JFK, and I just had this woman tell me, "You're not gonna make it." And in that moment, the fact that I am my mother's daughter kicked in. And I turned to Josh and I said, "Tell her to give us our boarding passes now. I know we can figure this out." Immediately to my right, there was a staircase that led down to the shopping concourse. I ran down those stairs, and the very first thing I saw was a luggage store. I run in. I say, "I need your biggest piece of carry-on luggage, and I need it now." Within three minutes, I had a brand new piece of carry-on luggage. I was running rack up those stairs with a carry-on duffel. Now, Josh had our boarding passes, and in the middle of the terminal, we start taking everything out of that big hard luggage and stuffing it into this carry-on duffel. We are causing a commotion. So naturally, the cops come over to find out what the heck is going on. <laughs> Officer, we really need to catch this fight. She told us we missed the checkline to check our bags. The only shot we have is this carry-on duffel. That's all fine and well, lady, but you can't leave a piece of empty luggage just sitting in the middle of JFK. That would cause like a major security lockdown. Josh, who's like one of the best negotiators ever, said, "You keep back and let me handle this." And miraculously, he did. Now, in the meantime, I got everything I could into that carry-on duffel. This thing is stuffed to the max like a friggin' pinata. We pick it up and we start running to the air tram because remember, our flight is leaving from a whole other terminal. At this moment, it's about 5:20. We have to make a 5:40 flight. We get on that air tram. We look up. We realize we are three stops away from where we needed to be. At this point, I am a nervous wreck. I'm trying to stay positive, but gotta admit, this was not looking good. <laughs> So we get to the terminal. It is now 5:30. We have 15 minutes, but we still have to get through security, and we need to get to our gate. The air tram doors open up. My heart drops again. The air tram lets us off in some weird parking lot that we have to cross through to even get into the terminal. And of course, walking in front of us at a snail's pace was an enormous swarm of seven-year-old soccer players and their family. <laughs> I say to Josh, if this little swarm of soccer-playing Smurfs gets to security before we do, we are toast. So we pick up our overstuffed pinata, which, by the way, is at least 50 pounds, and we start running. We go wide around the swarm of soccer-playing Smurfs, and we get to the front of the security line. Right now, it is about 5:35. We have 10 minutes to take off, so we're taking off our shoes and we're taking off our belts and we're putting everything onto that conveyor belt. We're about to walk through the metal detector when this sweet older TSA guard holds up his hands and stops us and goes, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa." Slow down a second, folks. Looks at Josh very suspiciously. Aren't you? Aren't you that guy from TV? I've seen you, man. You're on Law and Order. You're in the movies. You're a mate. Hey, Joey! Joey, come here. Hold on a second. You gotta meet this guy. 
worst time ever for Josh to be recognized. So we finally get through security. Right now it is almost 540, but we still have to get to the gate. So we look at our boarding passes, we look up at the board, and of course, our gate is the farthest gate away, the last possible gate in the terminal, which appears to be at least a mile long. I turn to Josh, I say, Josh, take your backpack and run! Get to that gate, stop the plane, do not let them leave without us. Josh puts on his backpack and he starts booking down the corridor to stop the plane. I pick up the overstuffed pinata and I'm doing everything in my power to run. So I I start running and then I'm sweating like a pig and I start crying and snots are coming out of my nose and I can't even wipe them because I can't let go of the overstuffed pinata and I'm running and I'm running and my heart feels like it's about to beat out of my chest and my legs are on fire and I turn and then I start praying to God and baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph and all the saints please don't let me fall on the floor and I'm running and I turn down the corridor and I see this tiny little figure in the distance and he's jumping up and down and waving his arms and it's Josh and I can't tell if he's telling me to stop or keep going so I keep going and I keep going and I get about 20 feet in front of the gate and Josh and the stewardess come and they get the overstuffed pinata and the stewardess says ma'am you're okay you made it you made it and Josh and I stumble onto the plane and we are disgusting and we're disheveled and we're sweaty and we're smelly and we take that overstuffed pinata and we shove it into the overhead bin and it barely fits just barely and we collapse into our seats and he takes my hand and I look at him and I say babe we're gonna make it we're really going to make it and in that moment the captain came over the loudspeaker Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard flight 1125 with nonstop service to Barcelona. Air traffic control has just let us know that due to some severely high winds, <laughs> we're gonna be on the ground for at least an hour. So just sit back and relax, and we'll get to you on your way as soon as possible. You can't make this up. So I'm happy to report that, yes, we got to Barcelona, we had an amazing time. Josh and I just celebrated our 13th year anniversary. Thank you. And I have been taking regular time off ever since. But what I really want to come back to is this magical mantra, this idea, this belief, this conviction, everything is figureoutable. What this is, is a practical discipline. This is an approach to life that can make you virtually unstoppable. Not unstoppable in the sense that everything will go your way, because you know it won't. And not unstoppable in the sense that you'll never get disappointed, or feel defeated, or find yourself in impossible situations. Because we all do. But unstoppable in the most pragmatic and profound sense, meaning that nothing no thing, no situation, no circumstance will ever again stop you from moving ahead. And here's why this idea is so important to get. Because whether you realize it or not, the actions you take every moment of every day are shaped by what you believe. Now, if you believe there's no hope or that something's not possible, or that you ain't gonna make it. Your actions, your behavior will reflect that. Now on the flip side, when you know in your bones that everything is figureoutable, your actions, your behavior will reflect that. So make no mistake, my friends, what we say to ourselves in the privacy of our own minds matters. It drives our behavior, which drives our destiny, which shapes our world. And this isn't just my opinion. Our entire culture has been transformed by people who believe and behave like everything is figureoutable. Think about the Wright brothers. If they hadn't believed human flight was possible, they wouldn't and couldn't have spent even one minute trying to figure it out. If the suffragettes hadn't believed women's voting rights were possible, they wouldn't and couldn't have spent even one minute working to make that a reality. 
And what we need now, more than anything else, is people who believe in what's possible. From healthcare, to the environment, to education, to our food system, to inequality and injustice on every level. There are so many important things that we need to come together to figure out. So the question I want to leave you with today is this. What would you do if you held this idea to be true? What would you create or heal or transform or transcend? Who might you become? Because if we start to think about our creative challenges and our life challenges and our collective challenges in this way that everything really is figure outable, it all starts to change. We go from feeling defeated and overwhelmed and broken to feeling courageous and capable and full of hope. I believe we must teach this to ourselves and to each other and to our children and to our children's children. Because there will be moments in your life when an opportunity is presented to you to do something or say something or change something. And I want you to make a promise to yourself right now that from this day forward, you won't waste one more minute of one more day saying to yourself, I don't know how to do that. Or I don't know if I have what it takes to be that. Because you and I both know in our heart of hearts, yes, you do. You are divinely blessed and infinitely capable. And there is no fate, no circumstance, no situation that can hinder the unstoppable power of your human soul. Because as my mama taught me with her tinny little Tropicana orange radio, and as I remember doing the ugly cry in the airport with my overstuffed pinata, <laughs> everything is. Figure outable. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I'm Oprah Winfrey, and you've been listening to Super Soul Conversations, the podcast. You can follow Super Soul on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Join me next week for another Super Soul Conversation. Thank you for listening. All your favorite hit shows are available now with the tap of a finger. Let's go! Download the Watch Own app and every week stream new episodes of the shows you love, including classic own series. Watch what you want, when you want, wherever you want. We have the power! Watch now on the Watch Own app.